Hello YouTube, I'm your host Refocus. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the back rooms. Uh, now this game could be sorted as a survival horror game, um, while it still has the back rooms concept. It's still able to differentiate uh, the gameplay from most other backroom games on Roblox. But here's the thing. I think this game could be so much better. But before I share my reasons, feel free to check out my channel for more videos just like this. I've been on a hiatus for a couple of weeks now, I think. Um, I made a whole community post. I'm not expecting everybody to see it, but uh, yeah, I made a whole community post talking about the reason why I was kind of gone, had my laptop messed up, and I'm good now. That's the main thing that really matters. Um, but yeah, let's get into the video, man. Let's go. Now, our protagonist for this story, his name is Sullivan. A really unfamiliar dude, in my opinion. We're kind of in some sort of world that has an economy that just got us a sort of war that apparently never happened. And after this war, the president wanted to express his ego by building really tall buildings. Sullivan was called to head out to some sort of parking lot building to do some job. On the way there, you can hear a man named Lucas Gray is currently missing on the news. Moving forward, Sullivan entered this building, but many strange things happen. He gets lost almost instantly and realizes he's alone and starts running almost immediately. Suddenly he falls and there was just darkness. You spawn in and there's so much dialogue waiting to be signaled. Apparently there's many bosses for you to search aside and honestly, it's there to help you survive. In this level, you need to find a four digit code and enter that into the key card. Now the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Look around as you progress through the map while also dialing around entities. Then boom, you have the code. Enter the code inside the keypad. Then, only then, you're able to leave. Now this is a start to a well-made horror game, am I right? Yeah, but things kind of downshift from this point on. And I don't mean that in a good way, bro. While I have some good things to say about the next level, there's still a lot of things we need to break down. Let's go. Yes, the last part you played was basically the end of the lore and any sort of dialogue that's, that will ever happen in the game. Like literally, there's nothing like that happening for the rest of the game. Well, actually, there is that one part, level 69. And yeah, after that small dialogue, there's nothing else to be said in the rest of the game. The thing is, this game started off with something unique, just for it to be pushed off in the rest of the game. Why? This could have been something that would have made the game stand out entirely compared to other backroom games. But nah, the devs have decided to just not further extend on this. Why? I don't know, bro. Now the term flushed can be easily described as flushing something down a toilet, obviously. Well, that's what I mean. While well, talking about the horror in this game. Essentially speaking, these levels really have potential to be really scary. Sadly though, that's not the case. Let's go through every level real quick. Level 1 could be, I guess, somewhat breathtaking in your first playthrough. But once you figure out your main goal, everything kind of goes smoothly. The dialogue that was previously played really sets a good imagination in your head on what to expect. But really overall, it's a solid level. Not too scary, not too bad. Horror scale for this level is like a solid 5.4 out of 10. Level 0 is where things kick it up a notch. The ambiance is quite terrifying, bro. The eerie sounds that entities constantly make, the constant sound of footsteps getting louder and louder. Also, the lights can suddenly turn off out of nowhere for a certain amount of time, and you're just sitting there dreading for the lights to be turned back on. This level does so many things right in terms of horror. So yeah, level 0 gets an easy 9 out of 10 in terms of horror. It's sad to say this, but this is probably the scariest level in the game. Let that see again, bro. Level 2, man. Dang, um, it really sucks to realize how much potential this level has. I mean, the setting of the level is pretty much great. The fact that there's annoying rats that constantly try to come at you is what makes this level quite annoying. Like, there's no way to get away from these rats other than killing them, risking your life just to find a way out. I mean, this is not bad in a sense because this is a survival horror game, but just, bro, the amount of rats that come at you is so unbearable. It removes the horror completely from the level. In terms of horror, this level gets a 4.6 out of 10. Level 94, aside from the stupid looking robots that walk around during the day, when night comes around, that's when the real horror kicks in. Literally no light shining from any location. Now the only criticism that I can call upon this level is how branded the monsters are at night. Like, it sometimes becomes frustrating after a while trying to run away from them. Since this map is so open, like, bro, it is so open out, bro. And again, these are things that I can honestly just nitpick at, but really if you have to go through it yourself and you're a beginner player, being in these type of situations really suck. But yeah, overall, Nighttime in this map is a solid super fire to 10. Ah, the fan favorite. Um, this level has quite literally no horror to it. Absolutely zero build up to the chase. Instead, you're able to walk around normally until you find this exit door. Then you're suddenly back where you started. Till then, that's when the chase actually starts. The music really takes out the horror from it the most. I mean, I feel like instead of hearing loud, abrupt music, why not throw in disturbing noises of the entity chasing you? Like them 
growling or yelling or something like that. That would be more terrifying. <laughs> But yeah, of course the devs can't do that. So yeah, this level gets like a two out of ten, bro. Level seven ninety. Um, this is a level that has no fucking horror to it, and trust me, it has the potential to. The weird looking snowman that moves around once you're not looking at them. If anything, bro, this is the most peaceful level if you move the disturbing looking snowman. One thing that I would personally add to this level is a nighttime feature to it. I feel like it would make the level ten times more scarier if that was present. But nope, it's not. Level four out of ten. Ah, dang, man. Um, level sixty nine. Another level that has the potential to be scary as heck. Literally, once you look up in the sky, there's some sort of elongated dark creature that just hovers over the rose and it makes an unsettling noise once it attacks all of that is flushed down due to the, the music not really putting you in a horror mood it's more like an ending to a sad movie bro like literally also the annoying red tall creatures that are damn near impossible to get away from bro they also make call of duty zombie sounds Really, devs? Gosh, bro. Another thing with the map design of this level is you having to run in a straight line and passing through those annoying ass creatures just makes it really annoying. This level gets an easy 2.5 out of 10. Now the last couple of levels are pretty much garbage in terms of horror, so I'll go through them quickly. Level 922 is literally a level for you to farm items. Nothing else. <laughs> What the f Level 1120 is pretty much the same thing, just there to farm and also have a chance to get a scythe, which is, I think the rating for it was like 1 in 12,000 chance to get. Like, bro, who made these ratings, bro? Like, what the? The end, uh, probably one of the worst boss fights I have ever seen in a horror game. Um, Quite impossible unless you have some sort of high ground or uh, the scythe, which is pretty brain dead in this game. And since the movement in this game is pretty much garbage, it's just impossible to maneuver yourself and get good angles and not get hit by this disgusting creature. Now, there could be a lot of things said about the gameplay, and honestly, I can go on for like multiple hours talking about this. But to keep things straightforward, the hunger bar is pretty annoying to deal with. Um, yes, food is pretty much regularly seen in every level, but it's just annoying to deal with it entirely. It's not something I will remove, but it's, it's all right for now, I guess. Your sanity is probably one of the worst things I see in the game. Uh, probably one of the worst things to deal with as well. Um, I get it if I, I can lose my sanity as, I, as I'm looking at creatures, fine. But to recover my sanity, they make you drink water. And that could but cut off my legs. And like, if I'm dreading from fear or I have some sort of sanity from that, I'm going to drink water and I'll be fine, apparently. And the stamina. Oh, God, don't get me started with the stamina, bro. Like, the whole running mechanics or feature in this game is just unbearable. It's terrible. I can run up to like, let's say, up to my um my stamina going halfway to the bar right and there'll still be an entity right behind me like, bro that's not how you do movement in games man you don't make it impossible to run away from entities it takes away the horror and the fun away from the game simple logic now the entities and creatures in this game are quite annoying to get away from and quite annoying in general like sometimes they have this huge damage input and they can just knock you through literal bricks and walls and sometimes i feel like their damage is close to goku's bro it's just crazy but my goodness man at least let us run away from them or at least hide like there's no hiding feature you cannot hide in the back rooms you literally can't bro you can't the game passes i don't know if you guys see the game passes for this game it's honestly unbelievable the, the, the game passes start with a gun where you can literally craft guns easily in the game there's a game pass for you to uh, get more stamina there's a game pass for you to get other things that you should be able to get within the game you know what i'm saying like why not have these features in the game why not have the ability for me to upgrade my stats within the game it'll make it way more better Better in a sense because it's a survival horror game you know what i'm saying like i don't see the point of making that game pass where you can implement that into your game and make it far more i don't know a game <laughs> like bro the pvp oh my goodness <laughs> either remove pvp or allow people to turn on and turn off pvp somewhere because my goodness bro it is not fun at all like literally like i get it people want to be more energetic and want to PvP and fight everybody. But my goodness, is it toxic in the back rooms? Like, there'll be times where I'll just die out of nowhere, get attacked from nowhere. And you, you know what their excuse is? Their excuse is because it's funny. It's the only thing that excites them in the game. Like, bro, how do we, I, what? I don't know, man, but I'm sorry. I'm not with it. If any dead watching the video, imagine this, right? You have a new player that's completely new to your game and they come play your game. They, go, they come to the beginning and they get immediately killed by a random for no reason. Is that fun? Is that really fun for the other player? The player who's getting killed over and over Again. That's why I think this should be like a, a PvP on and off system. It'll make the game more like a game in my opinion. 
The back rooms versus the paraphobia. I'm gonna make this really short and simple for you. A paraphobia is the better game overall. Gameplay wise, the horror aspect wise. <laughs> And the sad thing about this is, this whole comparison, is that people actually believe that the back room is better just because you're able to fight back against these energies, which is the most stupidest like rebuttal and argument I've ever seen, like gameplay wise. As you can see here in this community post, people actually vote the back room over a paraphobia. Now this could be because of the community that uh, this YouTuber had around him. No, no offense to him at all. But what the hell? <laughs> like what? Do you guys see what I'm saying at least? Like a paraphobia is objectively a better game. There's no strong magic behind it. You know what I'm saying? It's not complicated at all. Now, the real question is, does the backwards have potential to be better than the paraphobia? I think so, 100%. In the beginning of this video, I said, I think the game could be so much better. It has that replayability to it that I don't think a lot of games have nowadays. And the reason why I kept playing the game. But then again, we won't know until time goes on. But yeah, man, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Um, I really enjoyed making a script for this video. I really enjoyed the editing as well um yeah it's been really fun man if you enjoyed the video or if you agree with my takes or if you disagree that's fine uh leave a like if you want to and uh be focused out